Hi there and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Argus and today I want to travel to the far far east and follow the voyages of Marco Polo. The newest game from the German publisher Hans im Glück. I believe the game is not yet available in English and I believe it's being published by Siemen Games. So I have to do the walkthrough with a German version of the game, but I think this shouldn't be a problem as this one is a Euro game and more or less all of the components are kind of language independent. So please bear with me. Luckily some nice guy on BGG already prepared an English translation of the rules so I don't have to look up the right terms on my own. So thanks very much for that. In the voyages of Marco Polo the players are traveling through Europe and large parts of Asia of course to establish their trading posts and gathering goods and money to fulfill their contracts in order to gain as many victory points as possible. Contracts are the main way to score points during the game, but there are other opportunities such as those objective cards that give you some good points when you build a trading post in specific locations or by establishing a trading post in Beijing. But there are several other ways to score you some points and I guess I might be able to show some of them to you during this walkthrough. As usual, I will walk you through some actual rounds of the game rather than just giving you a rules overview. And I guess I will simulate a three player game which will also give me the possibility to show you the special abilities from some of the various characters that are available in this game. In the basic game, which is still pretty much advanced, the characters are assigned in a given order. So the first player will be Rashid Adin Sinan, the second player will always be Matteo Polo and the third player will be represented by Berkey Khan. In the advanced game the players can choose the roles from a given set of available characters starting with the last player, but here I will stick to the basic game. It's pretty similar with objective cards where in the advanced game you are allowed to draw four and choose two and here in the basic game you just draw two and have to live with that. Those objective cards provide some endgame points if you manage to establish trading posts in those two cities that are depicted on each card. Additionally you get a number of additional victory points depending on the amount of different cities you have established a trading post. As each objective card shows two cities, you can get up to 10 victory points for those cities. If the objective card show the same cities, you can only score up to the amount of different cities though, but it might be easier to fulfill the main goal on those cards. The game lasts five rounds, which can be pretty quick, and whoever has the most victory points by the end of the game is the winner and pff, whatever, gets an extra favor of the Khan or so. Each player starts the game with some coins, again depending on the starting player order, some camels and one starting contract which shows a blue back. So let me show that to you, those are the blue starting contracts and of course each player draws two of those objective cards at random and again I'm playing the basic game so I just drew two cards at random. Those starting contracts are a bit easier to accomplish, so it's a good way to get some starting resources like victory points or actual cash. Each large city gets a random city card that can provide an additional action and a large city bonus tile that can be claimed by the first player who will establish a trading post here. In the basic game the small cities get specific small city tiles that provide ongoing bonuses to the players who have a trading post here. In the advanced game those tiles will be assigned randomly. We lay out the first six contract tiles that are available during the first round and then we are already good to go. There are some special setup rules when playing with fewer than four players, so in a three player game only four of those black dice are available in a four player game, this would be five. And the first space on the favor of the Khan action space is occupied by the neutral player, so basically the player who is not participating in this game, which means this action can only be taken three times in a three player game. 
Normally we would determine a new starting player, collect any start of round bonuses and reclaim all our dice. But we can skip those steps as we are in our very first round. Still, we have to roll our dice, with the exception of Rashid Adin Sinan, who doesn't roll any dice. He is allowed to choose the result when performing an action. Seems pretty powerful, but the other characters are pretty cool too. And then we can start playing around. The player can perform one or more additional actions if desired. This is something you can do after or before your main action. Then the player must perform one main action as long as he has dice left on his player board actually. And then the player may perform one or more additional actions if desired after the main action. It is then the next player's turn in clockwise order and so on and the round basically ends when all players have used all of their dice. But we still have to roll the dice for the second and the third player and here we have again an exception as the second player is Matteo Polo who starts the game or who starts every round with a white die that he can just add to his normal dice pool. Additionally, he's allowed to draw one contract at the start of every new game round for free. So he doesn't have to spend an action to claim a new contract. And this is really powerful. So for once he's getting one more die apart from all the other players. And he's saving one action because he starts each round with an additional contract. So let's see what he gets. And here we have a pretty wow that's an expensive one so he has to spend two camel three gold two pepper but then he would gain two resources and nine victory points and nine victory points are definitely something in this game but let's roll the dice for the blue player again you would look for any compensations or if the overall result would be less than 15 he would get some kind of compensation for each point that he's under 15 he would gain either one coin or one camel and this is definitely relatively good compensation in this case of course that's definitely not a problem that's a very high result so he can let can do a lot of cool actions in this round so let's return those dice to the player and then we roll the dice for the red player that's also over 15 barely but it's definitely over 15 so he has to live with that result so let's put it back on his player board let's have a quick look at the special ability of Berke Khan normally you would have to pay some coins if you want to use an action that has already been used by another player and he can ignore this special rule and this is also very powerful okay what can you do basically you can go to the market and get some resources or camels you can try to gain the favor of the Khan by just placing a die. It's not really a problem. You, in most cases, you definitely get that in order to get one resource of your choice and two camels. You can grab yourself a new contract by going or by placing a die on this row here, or you can travel by spending two of those dice. As soon as you have a trading post in one of the big cities, you can also use the city card that's present in this game. And this is definitely a random choice. So there are a lot of those city cards in the box. So you have a lot of variety in this one. This one, for example, if you place a die here, then you can exchange two different goods and would be allowed to travel one region ahead and this is definitely something that can be very powerful and especially where by placing higher die on this one which means you can do that action more than once camels are key in this game so the green player decides to place one of his die to the row here for the camels remember he can choose which results he wants to place definitely seems powerful but really trust me the other characters are pretty powerful too so what can he do with his six on this row so we will just have a look which column he would be allowed to claim in this case he would go all the way to the right and this means he would be allowed to claim six camels from the market so he's allowed to take two of those big ones that represents two camels on his 
player board accordingly. It's still his turn, so he might consider doing one or more of those additional actions. And one very important additional action says take one black die and you have to pay three camels to do that. And this is exactly what the green player will do. He will pay three camels and grab one black die from the common reserve. And this is an exception. You are only allowed to do this special action only once during your turn. Not during a round, really during a turn. That's definitely important, but gives the other players also the possibility to claim those additional dice. And each additional die is a potential additional action. That's really important. Normally the player are supposed to roll this black die immediately when they claim those, but as he is Rashid, he does not roll any die, so he just places this on the player board and can decide later on which number to choose from. He could immediately spend this black die or any other die to go for another additional action, for example, collecting some of those coins here. And this is something you can do as much or as often as you like. And you also can use your camels to modify your die results. So for example, by spending one camel, you are allowed to reroll any one of your dice. You can do that as often as you like, or as you have camels basically. And for two camels, you can increase or decrease the value of any one of those dice. So for example, making a four out of this three, for example, or basically a two or th two out of this three here. Of course, you're not allowed to go from a one to a six or four or six to a one. I think green player says, okay, I'm done. I don't want to take any more additional action. So it's the blue player's turn. And I think blue decides to claim the favor of the Khan. And this one works a little bit differently. So you already see one dice of the neutral player and <laughs> during setup I mixed that up. Of course the yellow player is not participating in this game. So this die will always be present here. If you want to claim the favor of the Khan, you have to put a die next to this die that is even or higher or equal or higher to the die that's already here. So in this case, blue could decide to place his die with a value 2 here, which is perfectly legal, and then he would be allowed to claim the favor. If the next player would try to do the same, he would have to, to place his die with a value 2 or higher and so on. But in this case, this is fine. So blue will get two camels and either one of those, and he will go with one of those silk goods, which he will put on the player board accordingly. Keep in mind that most of the actions can only be claimed by you once during the game or at least with the same color. So the blue player could not place in another blue die during this round on the favor of the Khan here. But as he has rolled the white die, he might be allowed to place the white die because white does not belong to blue, which is legal in this case, but still has to follow the same rules. So this has to be a higher die and placing a six on this one can be a pretty mean move, but sometimes it can help to more or less um, makes it difficult for the other player to claim that favor here, for example. But in this case, I think he won't do that. Well, let's see. He can also claim a black die and I think this is what he will do. So he will also pay three of those camels and then he will claim the first black die. He has to roll this die. That's a five. So he was definitely lucky here. And you already see that Matteo Polo can have a lot of those dice because of his special ability. Then it's the red player's turn and he will do the same. He will place the red die on the favor of the Khan here again. He would be allowed to get two camels. That's clear. And I think he will go with a gold resource as gold is the most valuable good in this one. And he has a clear, easy, basic contract that can help him to score some points and get some goods in return. So place those here. And I think he will also do the same. He will pay three camels. To grab the next die, he has to roll it as well. That's only a three, but still that's pretty much okay. 
Before someone of the other players will play a black or a white die here, I think green will also place a die here. So the favor of the Khan is now completely blocked for this entire round, basically. So in this case, he would be allowed to gain two camels as well. And due to his starting contract, I guess he will also take a silk good. As Green has more than enough camels, I think it's fair for him to also claim the last die. So he pays three camels again and then he takes the last black die. And again, he doesn't need to roll this die because he can choose any number of his dice. Blue will go to the market and I think he will go for some additional silk. Claiming silk means you have to place two dice. And this can be any combination of your color, white or black dice. This really doesn't matter. At least not when you place your very first dice here. And now you look again into the column, but you're only allowed to choose the column of your least die. So in this case, he placed a five and a six there, which means he can go to this column here, which means he gains three silk, one coin and one camel. You can always select to go to a lower valued column, but in normal cases you would only do that, for example, going from a three to a uh, from a four to a three if you need a camel desperately or something like that. But in this case, that's pretty much clear what he wants to do. He gets three silk, one coin and one camel. So that's Three silk, one camel and one coin. And I guess with those he will fulfill his first contract and he will go with his starting contract. This is also an additional action which you can do before or after your main action. He already took his main action. So, but still he's allowed to fulfill as many contracts as he wishes. So he has to pay one camel two silk and this would give him three victory points and five coins so let's move him up one two three points on the victory point track and give him five bucks basically the contract that he achieved will be placed face down on the contract or completed contract space on his player board and whoever has the most completed contract by the end of the game scores seven additional victory points. Red will also go to the market with his main action and I think he needs silk as well for his starting contract. So he will place his two dice on top of the other players. Normally you would now have to pay some kind of a penalty because you're using an action that's already been taken by another player. But due to the special ability of Berkey Khan, he doesn't have to pay anything. Normally you would also pay the same amount that your, um, let's say, lowest die would show. Though in this case, he would have to pay three bucks in order to place those dice here. Though this is definitely some money he would be allowed to spare and still the same rules apply. He took look goes for the lowest die. In this case, that's a three. So he would be allowed to take two silk and one camel, which he can place on his player board as well, of course. I guess he will also fulfill his contract. So he's paying two camels, one piece of gold, one silk, and then he would be allowed to score four victory points. One, two, three, four. And additionally, he would be allowed to gain two different resources or goods in this case. And I think he will just go with silk and gold again, because those are the most valuable ones. Those camels, of course, will go back to the pool. This contract will be placed on his player board accordingly. And of course, we will move the resources back to his supply. Awesome. Before Green takes his main action, he will go with an additional action and he will place one die. And it doesn't really matter which number this die shows on this purse here. And this would give him immediately three coins. So 
One, two, and three. And for his main action, he will do a travel action. So he will have to place two of his dice here on the travel track accordingly. And here the same rules apply. You can travel up so many spaces as your lowest die would show. So in this case, he would be allowed to travel up to four regions, but this would also cost him 12 golds. In this case, he only wants to travel from Renisha to Moscow here, basically, which this only means he needs to travel one, two spaces here. So he has to pay seven bucks now, which is definitely something. So this just goes back to the bank and then he will travel one two spaces here to Moscow. For once he's now allowed to take this big city bonus tile and only the first player to get there is allowed to grab this and this one immediately gives him one new contract. This is definitely a good thing. Let's do that. And so here is his bonus contract. Two camels, one piece of silk, two pepper and then he would gain two resources and three victory points and also keep in mind you are only allowed to have two active contracts so whenever he's taking an additional contract he would have to discard an existing one here before but when you come to a city big or a small city you always have to place a trading post normally you take that from your player board and you start on the top left of this track so we just take this First training post here and we'll place it here on the first free spot of Moscow. So from now on he would be allowed to use the bonus action of Moscow which is pretty powerful for him because he can always choose which die to go to so he would place a six every time he could do that but keep in mind those city cards can only be claimed once during an entire round. So once the first player has taken this action, this is basically locked. If a player has placed his eighth trading post, he would immediately score five additional victory points. And if he would be able to place his ninth trading post, he would gain 10 more. This is definitely huge, uh, but definitely not easy to achieve. He could still do some more additional actions like claiming more of those coins here and you can place as many of your colored dice as you like so you can have all your five green dice here without any problem which is the only exception to the basic rule here but I think in this case this is okay for the green player. So we come to the blue player and blue definitely needs some camels. Yeah. That's for sure. So he will have to place one of his dice to this row. Again, this row is always being occupied by another player. So he would now have to pay four bucks because the lowest die and this only one shows the four. So let's do that very quickly. Those are four coins and therefore he would be allowed to gain four camels. So here's a big one and a small one. Red also needs some extra camels, that's for sure. So he will place his die with a number five. Remember, he doesn't have to pay anything because of being Berke Khan. And so he would be allowed to gain five camels. And that's definitely something to work with. Green will go to the market and he wants some pepper basically so he places his black die with a five here but still this is for him which is okay so he would be allowed to gain three pepper and two coins which is definitely important for him so here's the pepper and two additional coins and i think with his free action or additional action he will also fulfill this contract over here with two camels one silk and two peppers is it pepper or spice i don't know cannot quite recall therefore he scores three victory points one two three and is allowed to take two different resources and if we see that here he might be able to complete this contract as well so he will take one silk, one pepper back. This goes back to the reserve, those camels as well. And he completed his first contract. And I'm really tempted to do the same for this contract. Yeah, let's do that. So that's two camels, 
one piece of silk, one pepper. Therefore, he gains five more victory points. One, two, three, four, and five. And he would be allowed to gain a new contract. And this new contract gives him two victory points and the black die. This can be pretty useful. So let's get rid of those and put this one on his completed contract stack as well. Okay, Blue will place one of his die here at the bank. Really doesn't matter which die he placed this there. He immediately gains five additional bucks. And I believe he really needs those for his next action. I think Red will go with another contract and he will place one of his dice here and this shows the number five, which means he can choose one or two of the contracts that are on five or lower. Of course, he will go with this contract at level five because this would give him one additional coin or one additional camel. So he grabs this contract, which he will place on his player board accordingly. And for the second contract, I think he will go with this one. All the remaining contracts are being moved all the way to the left. And I think for his bonus, he will grab another camel. Green is basically done, so he can only pass. So blue will travel. He plays this, those high dice here. This is really a problem because he has to pay five bucks. I really considered to spend two camels, uh, one camel to re-roll that die. Maybe I should do that because you have to pay the penalty for your lowest die. Let's do that. Okay, so he will pay one camel and he will just re-roll yeah, this die here. No, of course the lowest die should be re-rolled. That's a three. I think with a three he's fine, so he will keep that result as it is. So he has to pay three coins, so he pays five, gets two back, and he will travel two spaces ahead. So therefore he has to pay a base price of seven. But as he wants to travel from Renisha here to Samarkand, he also has to pay three additional camels for that route. So you always have to be careful where you are traveling. So if you would travel from Alexandria to this oasis here, you would have to increase your travel budget by seven. That's definitely something. So in total, he has to pay seven bucks and three camels. So let's do that. He's paying three of those camels and seven bucks. And then he will be allowed to travel to this oasis and then here to Samarkand. And this would now allow him to move two spaces ahead. And I'm really stupid because I just figured out I spent my camel. And I think this was the original idea why I didn't want to spend my camel because this tile would let you travel immediately and you don't have to spend the base price for traveling. Okay, that's really a waste. Yeah, okay, cannot help it. So he can claim this bonus tile, but still he has to place his first trading post there. And as of now, he would be able to do this bonus action here. And this says pay two any resources or different resources, and then you would be allowed to take a travel like this can be pretty powerful as well. And as the blue player will be the last one to travel in this round because red only has one die left, he will be awarded the starting player for the next turn. And with this last action, I think think red will just grab some additional money so here he would gain five bucks and he doesn't have to pay the penalty because of his special ability and this is really powerful all the dice have been spent as you can see so we come to the end of the round which there's all the remaining contract tiles are removed we will reveal new contracts during the next step so Let's do that real quick. Five and six. 
And then we would start the second of five rounds. Again, we would determine new starting player. I already told you that the player who took the travel action at last basically will be the starting player. In this case, I did that before because those dice didn't show any color. Then we would be allowed to claim any city bonuses. So those bonuses are always triggered at the start of a new round. So if any player would have a trading post in Ormus here, he would be allowed to immediately gain three camels, which is definitely very important one. And you will also trigger the special abilities of your character. So each time you see this exclamation mark here, this means you get this bonus at the start of each new round. In this case, this means he gains the white die back and he would also be allowed to claim a new contract. And this was basically a complete round of the voyages of Marco Polo. The other rounds will more or less look like the same. Of course, there are different actions that you will be allowed to take. So I didn't show you how those action cards or those city cards are being triggered. But as I mentioned, those are being done like any other action. So for example, here in Karakorum, if I place a die here, for example, red player would play the die with a value three here, he would be allowed to do that exchange up to three times. So in total, he could exchange nine camels with three gold, three silk and three pepper. And this is definitely a very, very, very good return. And but you could also decide I want to only do that once, for example. And keep in mind, as soon as the first player has claimed this city action here, this is basically gone for the remainder of the round. Maybe one last comment around Beijing, which is unfortunately written incorrectly, but they're really apologizing in the FAQ. The first player to place a trading post here can play this trading post on the spot with the 10 victory points. And if it happens to be that this trading post will be there by the end of the game, this player would score 10 additional victory points. The second player, seven, four and one. And as soon as you have a trading post at the end of the game, you would also be allowed to exchange any two resources with one victory point. Without being to Beijing, the remaining goods in your warehouse are basically not worth a penny. Then you would score your objective cards and that's why Blue Player was very keen to travel to Samarkand because this is the basis for both of his objective cards. If he would manage to also travel to Kochi down here in South India, he would score seven victory points for this objective cards. And then he says, okay, I have traveled to two different cities or have two trading posts in those two different cities. So I would score three more points. If he would be able to also build a trading post in Xi'an here, for example, then he would have built trading post in three different cities. So he would score six additional victory points, but he would also be allowed to gain the four victory points of this objective card here as well. So in total, that's definitely a very good return for your travels. And last but not least, all the players count their completed contract and whoever has the most contracts gains seven additional victory points. Oh, and I guess you get one victory point for every 10 bucks you still have left. But really, money is not really a game changer in respect to end game scoring. You should really try to use it somewhat more efficient. Yeah, that's basically it. That was my walkthrough of the voyages of Marco Polo. And this is really an awesome game. I'm pretty sure that this will be one of my top Euro favorites for this relatively early year 2015. I like the theme, I like the artwork, I like to roll the dice, I like the competition of the different actions and the cities overall really a great, great experience. What really surprised me was the relatively short playing time. I exactly remember my first session when I discovered we were already in round four and I still had so many plans which I couldn't complete anymore. But then you decide to play another session and make things differently. I really suggest going with the advanced rules as soon as possible, even though the difference is not that big. But it's really a completely new experience when you have to play with another character the next time. New city cards show up in the large cities and 
also the let's say the variety in where the bonuses for the small cities show up is really also something that changes the game entirely. Just play one or two games with a basic setup and then switch to advanced ASAP. Big difference in experience. I really hope you enjoyed my little walkthrough here and hope to see you soon in one of my next videos. Until then, bye bye! <laughs>